Hey there! Welcome to the Marital Intimacy Show, available at themaritalintimacyshow.com. My name is Laura M. Brotherson. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, yes, it's been about eight years since our last episode because we've been a little bit busy writing another couple few books. So in addition to, and they were not ashamed, strengthening marriage through sexual fulfillment, we've also added the book, Knowing Her Intimately, 12 Keys for Creating a Sextraordinary Marriage, and my latest book, From Honeymoon to Happily Ever After, 23 Keys to Prepare for a Sextraordinary Marriage. So I'm back with you today as a guest on the Dear Young Married Couple podcast with the darling Adam and Carissa King. So I wanted to just share this fun discussion with you all as well. We're talking about the 12 T's of female sexual wiring and wholeness found in my book, Knowing Her Intimately. It's, it's everything you need to know to really know her intimately and be able to create your own sex ordinary marriage. The title of this episode number 60 is 12 T's of female sexual wholeness. So let's get started. Uh, but of course I have to start this episode off right with we get to talk about sex today. How fun is that? God approves of sex, and here is the crucial point, wants you to enjoy it. Sex starts in the mind, first of all. And secondly, sexy is a state of mind. It's a feeling that says, I like who I am, I like my body, and I'm happy to share it with you. You've got to make peace with your body as is. So if you don't have good stuff going on in your brain, we're not gonna be able to make sex go well. Dear young married couple, you're in a busy season of your life. You're probably working and involved in ministry. On top of that, you might even be parents or students. You're maxed, but you really want to stay connected in your marriage. And that's why we're bringing this podcast to you. I'm Adam King. And I'm Carissa King. And we work with busy couples just like you in our counseling office here in Sacramento, California. We also work with couples all over the world through online counseling and our couples are really just looking for ways to communicate with each other more effectively. Some of them are looking to heal from a breach in trust or find direction in fulfilling the purpose that God has for them. So come and join us as we have a conversation. We'll talk with therapists, authors, pastors, and other couples who will pour into us, giving us tools to become more intimately connected, get adventurous, and find purpose. Welcome to another Dear Young Married Couple podcast. Today, we're diving into a discussion on Christian sexual wholeness, and specifically from a woman's perspective. And we are so thankful to have with us Laura Brotherson. She's a licensed marriage family therapist and a Christian certified sex therapist, um, an author. We're going to be sharing a lot of her good stuff with you guys. So welcome, Laura. Thank you. Welcome. It's wonderful to be here. It's good to have you. Yes, you're, you're definitely an expert in this area, and it's such a needed area. Um, as Christians, we often hear a lot about uh, sexuality premaritally and um, about, you know, to stay pure, and that's good. Um, but we don't often hear a lot about what happens after marriage. It's kind of like, just go for it. Yep. And so um, we're so thankful that you have resources out there. Today, specifically, we're talking about the 12 essential ingredients for a sextraordinary marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I love that word. Is that a great word? <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> That's great. What dictionary did you find that? Oh, in? I'm, I'm pretty sure God gave me that word. <laughs> That's awesome. So we're going to be going through the 12 T's that provide this, this recipe of the key ingredients for women to embrace their sexuality and wholeness. Um, and so Laura, before we get started, um, share with us a little bit, just kind of a summary of how you came to um, write this book that, that we're going to be going through here, um, Knowing Her Intimately. Yeah, so I had written my first book, and they were not ashamed, um, back in 2004, and I just felt like we needed a book that was specific. The reality is, you guys know this, but most people, first of all, won't go to a marriage counselor anyway, and even less like 
likely to go to a sex therapist if they could even find a good one that they can trust, um, a good Christian one that they can trust. And so I kind of was like, I already had a lot of clients and I knew I couldn't see as enough, enough people. So I'm like, okay, how can I put this in a in a format that a lot more people can be helped. Mm. And what we know from research is a way, as well is that just marriage education can make a huge difference in a marriage. Mm. And so just knowing, okay, I am going to walk people through these 12 T's that we talk about are literally the 12 chapters yeah. of my mm-hmm. book. And I literally walk them through as if they were a client. And I kind of talk in the book as if they were a client. Mm-hmm. So a couple can get this book, walk through this material and do all of the work that I would really walk them through. And so I just, I wanted to be sex therapy in a book. That's awesome. Sex therapy can get what they need. So cool. That is so cool. And it's so, it's, it's awesome that you created this, this resource because like you said, a lot of couples won't even go to counseling, but it's so rare to be able to find someone that's Christian. Mm-hmm doing sex therapy. So yes, yeah, this is awesome. We're, we're looking forward to the steps. And I I specifically love in the book you have in the appendix, um, a self-assessment where people go in and, and rate themselves on a one to 10 scale about how, how well they're doing this, this aspect, this one T of the 12. And that's such a great way for people to develop that self-awareness. So as we go through these folks, be, be rating yourself, like how, how, how well do I do with this particular area? Yeah, that's exactly what I do, Carissa, with, um, you know, with clients too. I just say, or anytime I'm doing a presentation on this, I'll just say, okay, just pay attention to these 12 things. Look for one or two that are kind of like, like I'll have clients that will come into me because they already know me and they're like, okay, I've already kind of read your book and I know that I need to work on the tra- the transition and the technique or the touch. And they already kind of know sometimes what areas they're struggling with. Nice, mm. nice. That's awesome. So read the book, folks. Well, let, <laughs> that'll help you it will so let's let's jump into the first uh the first t okay. what is that okay so the first t is transformed sexual identity so here's what we know from research many women do not have a view of themselves as being a part sexual being mm. Okay, so so we see ourselves as a spiritual being, as a social being, but we don't see ourselves as a sexual being. Mm-hmm. So men don't struggle with this the same way women do. They, I was just talking with my son, who's a student here at, at college, and his roommate, and I'm like, you guys think about it a lot. You, not to be too explicit, but I mean, boys touch themselves all the time because they are going to the bathroom mm-hmm. and their body parts that the girls don't think about or touch, right. mm-hmm. and. So they, they don't have as much familiarity with themselves as a sexual being, mm. if that makes yes. sense. And so this transformed identity is just to say, we women especially need to work on embracing, developing, nurturing, tuning into, enjoying their sexuality. Whereas that is not a skill set that Adam or men are going to need quite as much as we do. Mm. Okay. And part of this transformed sexual identity is just really understanding sex as a good and godly thing. Mm. I mean, you know, the whole concept of, you know, I think you know this, but the whole concept of knowing her intimately, this is the biblical term for sex. Mm-hmm. And to know and be known is so huge, such a sacred concept for sex. I love it. Yes. I mean, it's a beautiful way to say that. And so your identity is part of your wholeness, is being a sexual being and taking some ownership for that and being responsible for that being a great part of your aliveness and wholeness. I mean, the concept here with with embracing that sexuality, which I think you've talked about before in your episodes, is it, you know, if you don't embrace that and develop that, then most women are having what I call duty sex, charity sex, dead fish sex. Yeah. yeah. I've got a whole list in my book about that. Um, but if you don't develop that as your own thing, Carissa, for example, you and me, then we're kind of just servicing our husbands or meeting their needs. Ah, mm-hmm. It's yeah. our own. Yeah, that's so good. And it becomes more of a checklist instead of something wonderful to experience right. that fills right. in part of that whole, like if, if we are holistic, you know, and we are 
sexuality is part of that, yeah. if that's just a checklist item, are they really feeling whole? Mm-hmm. Right. You know? Right. You got it. And would you say, Laura, that um, you find with your clients or folks who connect with you when you're speaking that um, even high drive women a struggle with embracing their sexual identity? Yes, but that's almost, they're almost another animal. And I'm glad you brought that up because it is really important. We do kind of have an 80, 20 rule mm-hmm. here with desire. And I have a, a, one of my TV episodes that we specifically about higher desire wives. We actually kind of think that higher desire wives actually have embracing their sexuality down really quite well. What we know about higher desire wives is they do have that embrace down. They do have tend to have a little better body image issues, uh, uh, less body image mm-hmm. issues. Um, they tend to be raised in a healthier sexual environment so that sexuality isn't such a weird taboo topic. So in some ways, our higher desire wives yeah. are have developed some of the things that I'm trying to help our lower des- desire wives develop, but they happen to be, I think, divinely matched with a husband who has the reverse issues going on Mm -hmm. because I absolutely believe now that God was very wise in why he created men and women so differently sexually because it makes both grow and become more whole. Hey friends, we'll be right back to our interview, but one quick note, if you love what you're listening to, you might also enjoy going through our card decks that we designed to help couples stay connected and in each other's world. So there's Foundations, which is our starter deck, and it's all about boosting your communication skills. And then there's Sexpectations, which is all about spicing up your intimate connection. And then there's Realizations, which is a deck for all couples, but especially dating or engaged couples who want to see how well they really know each other. So grab a deck or two, or three, by heading over to our website, dearyoungmarriedcouple.com slash cards. All right, back to the show. All right, take us to number two. What's the second T? Okay, so this second T is thoughts and beliefs. It's so great that for the women's book and the women's sexuality, all of their topics fit under a T word. (laughs) My husband book that I'm working on as my next book is not so clean and simple. Um, But this one is thoughts and beliefs, and it's related to embracing your sexual identity because sex starts in the mind, first of all. And secondly, sexy is a state of mind. So if you don't have good stuff going on in your brain, we're not going to be able to make this sex go well. So a lot, like one of the number one things and kind of even backing up to the embracing your sexuality, one of the number one things with both of these two T's that women have to almost start with is I often will say, okay, I want you to go home, Carissa, and write out 50 full sentences that are, I hate, I dislike. I'm frustrated about, I re- I'm resentful about, and I want you to clean house or begin to clean house with all of the negative accumulated garbage that we've picked up. Wow. Over time. That is so good. I love that homework assignment. I could tell by her reaction to that, that she's going to use that. <laughs> yep. Totally going to use it. Yes. <laughs> well, and think about it, Chris. I mean, every woman, you know, not only do we have an over-sexualized society, we don't have anybody really out there except us ish and a few others that are saying anything positive or affirming or godly about sexuality where is a woman going to get any good mental fuel Mm -hmm. for her sexual self so good yes yeah it's so rare it's uh just from working with so many couples i see this come up time and time again with this very negative image about Mm -hmm. sexuality and beliefs going into the bedroom and how how he like she's thinking oh he must see me as the way i see me you know like and she shuts down her sexual response because she can't see that her husband actually desires her Mm -hmm. right so that's a good point adam because it's kind of the main issue that couples run into with the thoughts and beliefs category of the t's because body image is kind of one of our biggest ghosts monsters Mm -hmm. and so you know women do really have like that statement i said sexy is a state of mind in fact my my instagram post i think this last week says sexy is a state of mind it's a feeling that says i like who i am i like my body and i'm happy to share it with you Mm. that 
sexy is. So part of this thoughts category is you've got to make peace with your body as is, because you are right on the money, Adam, that women do, men do not generally see women the way they see themselves. Mm -hmm. We think we don't look good. Men think we look great. They're like, hey, we get to have sex with her. I <laughs> Thank God God gave her to me. <laughs> exactly. And we don't, they don't notice our little flaws that we're overly so consumed true. with. Yeah. So part of the thoughts section here, not just thoughts outside the bedroom, but now most importantly for women is developing some mental discipline within the bedroom. Mm -hmm. So now in the midst of that warm up phase of lovemaking, I've got to keep thoughts out like, oh, my stomach or, oh, I hope he doesn't look at my cellulite or, oh, 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 you know, all these, I've got to keep that out yes. or what? I won't be able to be present so sexually. True. Love that. So true. I like how you say in, in the book that our, our brains, women's brains are like the world wide web in our multitasking approach. <laughs> so true. Yeah. And so part of that mental discipline skill is being able to say, okay, I'm pre and, and just a simple, quick tool for people. I have a five minute meditation on my uh, counseling website, Marital Intimacy Institute that people could download and use, okay. but simply, even just something as simple as a mindfulness technique, which you probably use just simply being able to close your eyes and, and slowly breathe in and out three times nice. and that develops i mean think about it your brain is like a muscle and you're you just did a bicep curl every time you do a, a mindfulness mm -hmm. tool so like good that. and then you've got the skill to say nope i'm present i'm having sex with my darling husband i'm focused here mm -hmm. go away. thoughts go away i think good. that whole idea ties into the verse that says taking every thought captive to the obedience of christ <laughs> Love that. Scripture. And that's really what you're saying is it's okay. So we have these thoughts that are coming up that aren't true. We can look at them and say, or analyze them and say, no, these aren't true and, and put them back down where, you know, they came. We, we don't have to accept it. We don't have to put those on. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. And related to that is just that for men, just to throw a little information for men, men also have to do that writing process because they've accumulated a lot of resentments as well. They come into marriage thinking they just married a sex goddess because they've been thinking about it for 24 years. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you know, and we've had no training or education or affir affirmation about it. And it's like, no, 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 to go, go, go. Yep. So men also have to process through some of that. And men also have to take every thought ca captive because their parallel dilemma where women are trying to mental discipline, staying focused in the sexual experience, men have to use mental discipline to not over overstep the sexuality and overstep their arousal. Mm -hmm. Because if men get ahead of us, mm -hmm whether, and it starts in their thoughts as well, then we're left behind trying to catch up and that causes an issue as well. Mm, wow. Very good. So many good uh, nuggets of wisdom in there. I'm all Instagrammable <laughs> comment right there. <laughs> That's great. For sure. Let's talk about number three. Okay. So tenderness, thoughtfulness, trust. This is the found. So let's say somebody is like, for example, a higher desire type wife, they've kind of got that embrace sexuality down. They've cleaned out a lot of that garbage in that thoughts and feelings. They've developed some mental discipline. Everything else now will be so much easier for them. If they have not done step one and two, everything else is going to be harder for them. Okay. okay. So that's why those two steps are super important. But now d diving into step number three, T, is this is that emotional climate, that emotional relationship that is our parallel to, an, to a guy's testosterone. So Adam has testosterone, but Carissa has to actually feel connected to Adam. Mm -hmm. and and, and when Krissa feels connected to Adam, mm -hmm. then that that's kind of a little bit of a parallel for what he already has physiologically. Mm -hmm. Nice. We've got to do it psychologically. He already has it physiologically. Wow. So, Good. Yeah. So this is, now, this is now your couple time. This is your pillow talk time. This is your love language worksheet. The simplest thing is going on to my Marital Intimacy Institute and doing that little worksheet that just write out. 10 specific things that make you feel loved and cherished, both of you, 
both husband and wife, because then they know exactly, Adam knows exactly what Carissa needs to feel loved and cherished. And it makes it so much easier for for a woman to then take those first few steps to move up the arousal wow. scale. For us, sex is a decision. We decide to go there. We're not feeling it. Mm-hmm. Like, like you men are walking around with this elevator music playing. Correct me. <laughs> Um, whereas men don't, or women don't, we're not walking around with that. We have to actually kind of manufacture it a little bit. Can can you talk a little bit about that rocket ship that you have in your book? Yes. Yes. And we'll get to it in a number eight technique. Slow down. But but just brief. And and maybe I'll, I'll hold it. (laughs) 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 Hey, good. She's getting ahead of us. Good. (laughs) I'm holding her down here. Let me just say here that women are kind of four steps away from desire, and we'll talk about that kind of rocket diagram in the technique section. So the last little thing with the tenderness, thoughtfulness, trust is that's just that foundation. And the number one, the second number one thing, I guess, is date night. Mm. My license plate on my car is date night. That is how important that is in that emotional foundation in the marriage. Mm. Everything else kind of flows from that. Love it. So good. We yeah. are huge advocates of date night. The yeah. research is very yes. clear. Preaching to the choir here. Must have at yeah, least sure. one date night per week or alone couple yes. time per week. Yes. Yep, for sure. All right. For sure. Take us to number four, Laura. Okay. So number four, and these next ones can kind of go a little bit quicker because t- time is really just that because like you said, women are the World Wide web. And so we're kind of multitasking and so many things going is that we do have to intentionally, consciously set some priority time, priority attention, priority energy for this important dimension of marriage. Mm. If we don't, it will fall to the bottom of the to-do list, especially as we have children, because they just are great consumers of our time and energy. And the mother as the nurturer wants to give it to them. Right. Because they're ready and willing to receive her attention and she gets the affirmation from it. Right. However, <laughs> the husband, yeah. if he's feeling neglected, because that's how he right. takes it, right? You know, right. I'm not priority. And then yeah. pouts about it or however he wants to, you cope. know, yeah. cope with that. But yeah, that's yeah. that's a very big one. I, I find it very helpful for spouses to plan time mm-hmm. to get together yeah. or at least yeah. play it up in their texts is like, Hey, let's, what do you think about tonight? You know, like yeah. kind of plan it out. I love this. Yeah. I love, I love both planned. I mean, to me, Friday night is just date night period. Okay. You know, that's kind of how we grew up. Mm-hmm. Friday night was date night. Saturday night was always a backup. If there was a half do that okay. the kids we had to go to Friday night, some game or performance but but when those kinds of things are scheduled and i have a lot of clients and i've even done this myself in the past where it can also be valuable for some to schedule lovemaking mm-hmm. Not everyone depending on that can be very contextual i've had a lot of clients where that is so um stressful and anxiety inducing that it's counter into it counter helpful yeah. counterproductive so that's that's different but back to what you said too adam is um, the number one, while a, w- a wife or mother is going to be uh, easily attracted to taking care of those kids first, the single most important thing a mother can do for her kids is have a great marriage. Yes. So if she can remember that, it will make it a little easier for her to put husband up at the top. Yes. Mm. Amen. Mm. Even lesser in quant- quantity, but still has to be a known feeling. Adam needs to always feel like he's number one while you're spending 90% of your time with your kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's doable. Yep. He doesn't need 50-50 time. Right. Good. Or that, Good concept. Or that she's available. Yep. 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 Yeah, for sure. So number five is kind of related. Transition is because women are so worldwide web and easily distracted and easily consumed elsewhere this transition process is simply a way for us to kind of warm up a little it's kind of what we'll talk about with the rocket diagram as well which you're welcome to pose or you know link to if you would like to um but it's that transition process is it's kind of like um one of the analogies or exercises i have in my book is bridges to desire and sometimes we can come up with uh wives bridges to desire 
Sometimes there are husband's bridges to desire, you know, transition processes. And sometimes there's some that we can do together. And so a lot, so I have couples sit down again, if they don't have access to me, they can just follow along in the book and say, okay, so what do you need wife to be able to kind of close down things and warm up to the process? I know one thing, you know, my kids are all, my youngest is, is in college. I won't say how old, um, <laughs> You know, there was quite a period of time there when I had young littles that every Thursday night was off duty for me. I was off duty from six o'clock till the rest of the night. And I could sit in the bedroom and read a book or work on something in the office, but nobody could talk to mom. I was just off limits. Yep. And that one of the number one things that women need is some form of a downtime okay. to, to be able to tune back into that they're also a wife. And also a lover. Mm. And that's, that's not easy to do when life starts happening. Yeah. And that's, that's why that first step is so important, remembering that you're a sexual being. But you're, if you're right. always on the clock, so to speak, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. I, Which you are. Right. 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 Yeah. right. Or she keeps herself on it. Yeah. <laughs> She's still playing over stuff in her head yeah. and not actually letting right. herself be. Right. Yep. Right. Sometimes I remind, yes. I remind Chris, uh, yeah. you know, hey, relax. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. And Adam, this is why I think God made husbands. I really mm -hmm. do. Because, you know, he, wives, I, I kind of, I kind of tease my clients a lot about this because they'll be like, why can't men, why can't women be wired like men? And I'm like, well, for one thing, <laughs> God did have somebody who would pay attention to the kids and keep them alive. <laughs> we were both the same. We just have sex all the time, all day long. And who would get? <laughs> true <laughs> that's hilarious i love it so, but it's true that but, but it is. is important and yes. and i think it it kind of goes back to the concept of um you know the wife needs to have that transition time just to realize that she has needs that she's yes. not always in nurturer mode but to recognize oh yeah. i have needs too and having that transition yeah. time helps with that yeah, and like Adam was saying about the going back to step one, if if a wife is not working on that embracing her sexuality piece, then then husbands start to become an item on a to-do yeah. list, and they feel that they are I mean, uh, I've got two different posts on Instagram that talk about, I just wish, this is a husband, a client, mm. I just wish I could get to the top of my wife's to-do list. Mm. Wow. Wow. And that has a double meaning. Yes. In there. So yes. you know what I mean? It just, that's a big deal. Mm. And, and so that's the, that's why there's a big difference between just talking about sex and, and working on it and to really understand what needs to be happening under the surface to get this right. Yeah. Yep. yep. So good. So, okay. okay. Number so six. Number six. Yep. So number six is talk. This one, again, is just a great one because talk is the primary means by which we connect emotionally. And you guys have created these fabulous little cards. <laughs> Shameless plug for you as Thank well. Thank you. But like we just got these, these expectation cards and I've already ordered the realization cards. I just haven't got them yet. But um, that's exactly what couples need in order to talk and to know each other. You've got to get to know each other outside the bedroom and inside the bedroom because that's what makes us women feel connected so that when my, you know, a husband comes and says, hey, do you want to get lucky tonight? And you're like, oh, I already like you. I already feel connected to you. This is back to the number three, tenderness and trust. Mm -hmm. Then it's easier for me to say yes to sex, even though I don't feel desire mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. I haven't moved up the arousal scale. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. So it's just necessary for couples to be able to tune into each other mm -hmm. inside and outside the bedroom. But here's the other extra little key. Almost all of these 12s have an outside the bedroom and an inside the bedroom element. Mm -hmm. Inside the bedroom element is that talk is something that I think is highly underused, is an, a form of auditory arousal mm -hmm. that we are not utilizing that is vital for women think about how men are visually stimulated okay that's a big deal for a right. guy so maybe let's compare women to being auditorily mm -hmm. stimulated and so i talk about something called auditory arousal mm -hmm. and and i've got that you know in this book as well and there's four different levels of it and i won't go into detail but but simply just in the midst of lovemaking 
things like even a mm or an ah or or oh that feels so good or oh I love that I mean any form of verbalization think about it commands mm-hmm. our attention yes. us women yes. who are uh, otherwise easily distracted mm-hmm. But if I'm consciously practicing, like I do with my clients, I say, okay, just practice saying an mm or an ah somewhere in lovemaking. Mm-hmm. And you'll notice that it helps you to stay more present mm-hmm. and push out all of those mental distractions. Totally true. That's yes. really good. In fact, if I go back and get my doctorate, I might, I'm probably going to do it on auditory arousal. Ooh, awesome. Okay. That, so we'll see if that happens. Yeah. I, I think that's a really good thing for husbands to remember too. Yeah. That yeah. that silence offers the opportunity for the wife to go somewhere else mm-hmm. yes. in her brain. Yes. And it yes. shuts down the man very quickly mm-hmm. of yeah. Yeah. she's not even here. Mm-hmm. Is she enjoying it? Yeah. Like yeah. he's already he's Where's here, she? he's paying attention, but yeah. he feels her leaving. Yep. Yeah. 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 And what I talk about in the book is cu- couples could just have a little conversation. They can look at that little section on auditory st- auditory arousal and just talk about, okay, so Carissa, would you like me to do that? Or would that be weird? I usually encourage couples first to try to have her do that first. Okay. Because otherwise guys kind of get a little bit ahead of the game. They, they get too much into that and it kind of can shut her down. Sure. And so Try to get the wife to do it first, but once they develop some of this, then they can share that together. And then it, I mean, it's like one of the levels, level three of auditory arousal is actually um, sexy scenarios where you, you play out Mm -hmm. having sex on the beach. Mm -hmm. And that's amazingly valuable for the mental discipline that women need in lovemaking. Mm. So good. Very good. Yeah. Fun. Very good. Yep. That's good. Number seven, touch. This is important just because outside the bedroom, we need a little bit more of this non-sexual touch that often goes a little bit by the wayside once we can have sexual touch. And so, you know, women a lot of times are missing out on that non-sexual that they need. And so we've got to kind of bring that back in. And one of my common touch homeworks is maybe Sunday night, we bring touch back into the marriage and it's all kinds of whatever cuddling and touching and holding, Mm -hmm. but not leading to sex. Mm -hmm. So we can connect them. That's good. I I have multiple clients right now who have, who remember the moment that they decided internally that they would never touch their husbands again. Wow. Wow. Wow is right. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they had learned, been trained by their husbands, unfortunately, that every time you touch me, I'm going to think I'm going to get lucky. And so she just shuts it off. Mm -hmm. So we have to break that cycle. Yeah, that's so good. So that one is, is really some good education for the husbands. Um, I love what you said that, you know, often the non-sexual touch goes by the wayside when you're able to have sexual touch. Because when you go back to the dating years, right, that's, that's when you're engaged in that non-sexual touch and you're, you're doing the hug, you're doing the holding of the hands, you're doing the, the touching their face. And that's such an intimate connection yes. and, and she's ready. And, but you know, you have the, that boundary in place. And then as yeah. soon as that boundary is lifted, Wow, I haven't thought of it that way. That 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 boundary being lifted makes that non-sexual touch go by the wayside for many couples. Right, yeah. and I feel for guys though too because I mean, if I think like a guy, which I've trained myself to do as a woman to be helpful as a sex therapist, is these guys are just like, what? Why? Why? Why would you hold hands when you can do this? I mean, like, what are we thinking here, people? Come on, mm-hmm. you know. So I get it. But yet they are also missing out on that other kind of connection. That's the, ox- I mean, that's also oxytocin outside yeah. the bedroom when kids are present. You know, you, you can't have sex all day every day, yeah. guys. You yeah. FYI. So, <laughs> I, <laughs> there are other things we can do. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I think um, like what you're saying too, is if there's a direct causal link from my wife touching me to me taking the cue, oh, she must want sex. She's going to stop touching me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think I've seen this happen so much where every, mm-hmm. and then, then she doesn't want him cause he's trying to, you know, start it. Okay. Like I'll start touching her to help her touch me so that we can go have sex. Mm-hmm. And yes. so, especially if there's any sort of disagreement, 
about what we want, like about sex or how often or whatever, it becomes an instant turnoff for that person. Like I'll do anything yep, possible to avoid mm-hmm. touching because that means we have to go do that. Yeah. And, and one thing that I tell couples is if you can just use your words and start to verbalize some of this, where a wife, like, like uh, one of the other steps uh, for embracing your sexuality is to work on your flirtiness because that is a way you really got to develop your wholeness around sex to be able to flirt well mm-hmm. and genuinely. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if, if, a, if a woman is kind of working on that flirtiness, being able to preface it by saying, okay, honey, I'm, I'm working on my flirtiness. FYI, Laura's making me do this. Sorry, I'm just working on my homework. So when I come up and smack your butt or slide my hand down between your legs, you're going to act like it's the most boring, calm, cool, collected, uh, uh, boring thing you've ever experienced because it's like old hat. <laughs> like, like, so right? Good homework. And so then he just knows to be chill. And she knows that she can just be, practice this flirty. And I mean, think about what that feels like to be a woman. We don't do that naturally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's stepping into our sexuality mm-hmm. in a in a kind of sort of erotic ish kind of way. Mm-hmm. This is not sending a little text that says "I love you." This is a physical flirty step, yep. mm-hmm. you know. So that that can kind of help change that dynamic. Mm-hmm. And same for men. So a man can say to a wife, "Okay, wife, I just I, I just want to snuggle with you. I am not trying to do anything more." Like and and smart guys will actually turn it down when she goes, says like, it's okay. When you know she's doing it just because. Mm. That's good. They will say, good. I really just wanted to cuddle and train her that you really can stay there. That's good. Yeah. That's good advice for those husbands listening. Okay. There you go. Okay. So number eight is technique. Okay. Technique and education. And this is a lot of what we've been doing this whole time is just getting more educated with all of these important intricacies and inhibitors and all these great things. Mm -hmm. So the key thing with the technique and education in that chapter is this rocket diagram that we keep talking about. And all we need to really understand there is women are four steps away from desire. Okay. What does that mean? For women, step one is we make a choice. We make a decision to have sex, to move forward with sex. We don't currently want to yet, guys. So sorry, but we don't. We don't have that feeling yet. Why? Because the the newer research, um, Rosemary Besson specifically, kind of debunked the whole Masters and Johnson stuff. It isn't just this linear, you know, male sex drive, which is what we've been basing women off of. It's more contextual. It's more um, relational. There's just a very different way that women are uh, develop desire. And so, so step one for us is we decide to. Why do we decide to? So let's go back to step zero. This is that back to the things we've talked about. A woman has to embrace her sexuality. Uh, the couple together needs to develop that connection, but the man needs to develop the sexual self-mastery to provide agency for her to freely choose. If he does not do that, then guess what? She can only ever have sex because she kind of has to or feels like she kind of has to because she knows if I say no, and my husband's a grump for three days or is impatient and irritable with the kids, then most, then a lot of women say yes and go for duty sex. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's where guys come in. Those are the three, and I call it, that's aces. That's why this is the aces is the step zero. Agency, okay. connection, and embracing your sexuality. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's the things that make a woman decide to say yes to sex. Then step two is some emotional connection in that lovemaking context. Step three is now some physical foreplay because now we've got to move her up the arousal scale. When she gets to three, four, or five on the arousal scale, caressing, kissing, touching, now she arrives at step four, which is where husbands started. Desire. Wow. Yep. So you get that, guys? Adam, does that make sense? Do you get that? Yes, it does. I think that we forget that. Okay. Um, And it gets gets frustrating that, you know, we're trying to get her there. Yeah. Um, but I think that's really good. 
And that's why in this technique and education realm, the two key things that people need to know is these, these 12 intricacies of female sexual wiring. Because if you don't know this, then women feel broken and men agree that women are broken. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. why you've got to know these things. And then the second part of the education that is, is mandatory is some of the sexual wiring differences between men and women. I won't even go to, into it here, but I have 17 of them in my book. <laughs> Okay. And so when you know that, so then Adam, back to your comment, instead of being frustrated about um, why she's not getting with the program, Mm -hmm. couples, when they know this, they're like, oh, so this is what it takes. So this is how we warm her up. This is how we do sex. And now it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Work with what is. Mm -hmm. I love that. I think the rocket is such a, such a great visual and uh, we'll link that in the show notes as well so that folks can um, can check it out. I yeah. like when you when you talk about education in the book. I have your book here open in front yeah. of me. Um, but you, you talk about educating yourself not only on, um, you know, the process and the men and women's brain differences, but also this part where you say each spouse must also be willing to identify and share their specific sexual preferences and desires, which can't be learned from a book. Right. Right. So good. Yeah. And the little thought about that then is, so for women, if they can pull out or get what I call just a sexual self-discovery notebook, it could be even just a little 99 cent Walmart notebook and start take keeping notes or on your phone of just things that you like or don't like. And we call these brakes and accelerators. What are your brakes? What are your accelerators? And do this too. But again, they're a little more forgiving if we don't do it quite right. You know, mm-hmm. but, but for a guy, it's super important now to know that, okay, you know, a major break for a lot of women is not brush teeth or not mm-hmm. mouthwash teeth. So you try to start having, you know, you know, romantic, sexy kissing with your wife. And she's like, Oh, yeah, you stink. Then it just, it, she's already four steps away from wanting to. So she's got nothing to buffer that, mm-hmm. that inhibitor. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yep. so that helps a lot too. So good. Right. And Breaks and accelerators. Well, and that's why step six is so important, talking about it. Right. And, you know, after you have, you know, after you've got lucky, <laughs> talk about it later. You know, perfect go back. Time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, perfect time to talk about it for sure. So good. All right, so, number nine. So number nine, tune in. This is kind of my favorite one, even amidst all of this, because when couples will do this work of talking and connecting and learning and educating together, then they are tuned in both to themselves, to each other, outside the bedroom, and then they can be tuned in inside the bedroom. Because think about it, guys. For a woman, if she's trying to do all of this work that you now understand she's internally doing in the midst of lovemaking, for heaven's sakes, the last thing she wants to be doing is directing traffic inside lovemaking. I mean, that's different if we're just making love to figure some stuff out, like trial and error kind of lovemaking. Mm-hmm. That's different than, okay, don't do that. And I loved what you guys said in your podcast, and I say this in, in my book as well, is just move them to the right place versus, oh, don't do that. Don't mm-hmm. don't make mm-hmm. negative when you're in the midst of lovemaking. Yes, mm-hmm. redirect. Yep. So there's a big tune. So tuned in, and I genuinely believe, because of how long I've been doing this work and I've done it myself, is that couples can tune in and have sort of that dream marriage that they long for, where you just get each other to know and to be known. And that's the most beautiful thing. We're all wired for that connection. And that's doable if people will do the work. Okay. So good. Okay. Love it. Last, last two are kind of go together, or the two next two are easy to go together. 10 is teasing and playfulness. When a marriage can be play, playful and teasing, that's my number one characteristic to let me know that a couple is doing well. And it's usually the first thing to go when they're not doing well. So, mm. uh, so sometimes people have to develop some of this teasing and playfulness. Um, I had a client, she was so cute. We'd been working on a lot of things. And she said, Laura, I, I want to, I want to work on being more spontaneous. I've gotten to where I like sex and I'm, and I can enjoy it and all of this, but it's kind of all still on my timetable. She goes, I want to be able to say, if my husband says, Hey babe, do you want to, I want to be able to say, okay, yes, 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 I can want to, and then start herself up those little steps. Mm. But she just wasn't good at that yet. And so that was something she wanted to work on. Okay. So that's teasing and playfulness. The related one, number chapter 11 is treats. 
love this one because also we have a lot of couples after 20, 30 years of marriage get divorced. Mm -hmm. Why? Two things. One, marriages die of neglect more than anything else. Okay, that's number one. Number two, when there is not some of that fun, flirty connection, the, the novelty, the adventure, the, the, the newness, if you can't keep it new and exciting, then our brains kind of die as long, along with our marriages. So mm -hmm. that's why those two are both in there to keep mm -hmm. the long, well, I'm, I'm going for the long term for, for couples. I want them yeah. to mm -hmm. do it all the way to the end of the days. Okay. Yeah. Laura, can you tell us a little bit about what you mean by treats? I know you're okay. talking about novelty. Give some examples okay. of what treats might be. Okay. So treats, treats are things like, you know, you've got, here's, I'm going to just pull up the little section here, but these are categories of treats. So you've got different locations, different durations, different times, so different times of day. Let's do quickies in the morning or a uh, longer love making at night. Um, speed, intensity, positions, scenarios, different kinds of foreplay, different kinds of ambiance, lights, candles, music, games, lingerie, attire or not, different senses, chocolate syrup, whipped cream, da 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 da. Who initiates? I remember the first time I was at a marriage uh, class or conference and someone said to me, and, and we just were in a little group discussion, and they're like, yeah, so, uh, you know, I wish my wife would initiate more. And I thought, and this was like way back in the beginning of marriage, and I was like, oh my goodness, I don't think I ever initiate, like ever. And you can see why, guys. You can kind of see why women don't have the elevator music and we're four steps away from wanting to all the we time. We got right? that one locked down right. pretty well. Right? <laughs> okay. So these are some of the things that you can kind of do differently. Um, sharing fantasies, just a sex bucket list. What sounds fun? Not big, scary fantasies that people freak out when they hear the word, but just what, what sounds fun. Do you want to have sex in the backyard in a tent sometime? What do you want to do? <laughs> That's good. Thanks for so. sharing some of the ideas for novelty <laughs> to get, get people brainstorming. Well, I, I, and I it's a whole it. chapter. <laughs> so there's more. <laughs> That's so helpful because, like you said, yeah, people's brain die just because they do the same thing over and over and over, and they're not being mindful about, hey, let's try to learn something, going back to knowing. Knowing doesn't stop at a certain point or a year. Like, okay, at 20 years, we're done figuring each other out. We got it down. It's all. Yeah. And then you wonder, well, then are things really going down after that because they're not really trying to learn anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. And that drive to learning more opens yourself up to adventure and novelty yeah. which leads to desire right so right. i love that it's so good yeah i love that as well for sure so last thing kind of a big big bang is the transcendence and surrender so think about this sex especially for a woman is a i mean a, an orgasm or a climax it's an involuntary response okay yes. so talk about that laura you cannot will yourself into an orgasm. And a skillful husband actually can't always officially do it for you either. Right. Okay? So what is it then? It's something we have to relax into and let go and let yourself experience. Okay. Mm -hmm. So part of that also is kind of having all of these other pieces in place. That foundation of trust is huge. Think about the wife that has some kind of sexual betrayal or trauma in her past. Mm -hmm. She's got to feel so safe with that darling husband of hers that she can be naked emotionally, physically, spiritually, sexually, in, in a way to let go enough that if I I had a, a wife and a, a client and she said, Laura, I'm just so, I'm so, I, I don't want to say something. I, what if I do something weird or say something dumb or act weird? I, ugh. And so of course that's going to keep you from having an orgasm, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. So right. Pr being able to transcend, to surrender to the spirituality of sexuality. I love, I had to pull out this little quote from, from the book that I think just perfectly explains this kind of concept of really embracing this. She says, I was especially happy and relieved to read your simple statement that opened the doors for me. God approves of sex. And here's the crucial point, wants you to enjoy it. Logic has always told me that God approves of sex. It's how we make babies. It's what draws men and women together. Adam and Eve, Eve had sex or no one would be around to worry about it. But for most of my adult life, 
by a reason that it was okay to let your husband have intercourse with you. But actually wanting to be kissed and touched or becoming aroused myself was something I was ex ashamed to express. During the times I got turned on and found enjoyment in sex, it was barely over when I would begin to wonder if God was disappointed in my behavior. I can't overemphasize how much that simple statement wants you to enjoy it has freed me and made all the difference. Mm. What surrender might feel like for some women, letting go into that God-given experience. And that he wants you to enjoy it. Yeah. He created sex. We forget that. God so created good. sex. And and unfortunately, thank goodness there are a few of us trying to change things, but but Satan has really just usurped this whole area yes. because good godly people won't talk about it because they're yeah. embarrassed or, or uncomfortable or it's just too taboo or all of these reasons, which I, I understand. Or ignorant. Or ignorant. Yep, that's a big one. So we just, we need to keep doing what we're doing so we can change the air about sex. Mm -hmm. So good. Laura, these are fantastic. Yeah. I, I know so many people are going to um, glean from this and apply it and that it's going to produce fruitful results. So I thank so you. Hope so. You bet. Thank you so much. This is going to help, I know, a lot of couples. Mm -hmm. Um because this, I mean, this is something that everyone deals with yeah. at some yeah. level. Yeah. We all yeah. deal with these, yes. yeah. with some of these steps. So thank you so much for, for this. Before we move on to the end of the podcast here with the Dear Young Married Couple letter, we have a couple things we want to cover. One is um, resources. We have quite a list of resources that you've authored, and we will be linking those in the show notes. Aside from that, do you have any other recommendations for folks? Yeah, I mean, I think I think you guys will probably already do this, but definitely they need to just get this book, Knowing Her Intimately. The reason why I wrote it is because people don't know how to have a sex to ordinary marriage, but they can learn how. And this will just make it knowing her intimately so much easier. And then that other one, the you know, you've got so many young couples that this book from um, from Honeymoon to Happily Ever After helps people before marriage, inside marriage to answer all those questions that people have that you're going to be, that you're starting to address as well. Mm -hmm. so and quick note, folks, this, yes. this book here from honeymoon to happily ever after, we are going to be doing a giveaway this week. So stay um, tuned and check that out on Instagram. You'll see it pop into our feed on Thursday. Um, it will have the giveaway of our sexpectations card deck, as well as from honeymoon to happily ever after by Laura Brotherson. Awesome. So if you want to be entered to win that you can, <laughs> otherwise we will link it in the show notes. If you just want to buy it right away. That's awesome. You bet. In fact, I, I'd be happy to let your listeners know about on my website, strengtheningmarriage.com, if they want to use a, a discount code I've been using for another group, um, it's just honeymoon prep in the okay. discount code and they can get the book for 10 bucks. Nice. Wow. Okay. So like, and I'll just leave that open for a little while so that your people can see it too, Thank but you. 10 Sweet. bucks so they can be better prepared. Awesome. In case, we'll in, there. In, in case they don't win. Yeah. <laughs> 10 bucks for your marriage. That's, that's nothing. Exactly. That's Love a deal. That. And, and for <laughs> yeah. engaged couples too. So that'll oh, be, yeah. that'll be excellent. Um, any other recommendations before we transition here? Um, I think, you know, a lot of my other good recommendations are in both of these books. So I talk okay. about these other good Christian resources um, that, that we can learn from. Like I said, I didn't feel like, you know, there was something that had everything in one place. So that's why I wrote these. But I do have other good resources as well, like any of the, you know, the Penner's books, um, you know, and Doug Rosenau, Celebration of Sex. So there are some other really good ones. Excellent. Okay. Good. So uh, if you guys are enjoying what you're listening to, please take a moment and rate and review the podcast. It helps us reach so many more couples when those numbers go up. And so we really thank you for that. Okay, Laura, we're ready for our yes. Dear Young Married Couple letter. Oh, love so it. rewind to the first few years of your marriage. Think about the advice that you wish you would have received and then yeah. fill in the blank. Dear Young Married Couple. All right. Dear Young Married Couple. Number one. Understand that the only person you can change is yourself. 
Put all of your focus on working on you. I tell my clients, if you focus on the things that you need to work on and everyone's got plenty to work on, that's a full-time job right there. It'll be really difficult to think about any negatives that your spouse might have because you're focused on that. Number two, practice work on being able to think like your spouse. Okay. This is basically empathy, but when couples can develop, it's part of the knowing each other and tuning into each other. But when couples actually practice, and I will often say to a cl- client's in session, I'll say, um, okay, so Adam, tell me what you just heard Carissa say. Mm-hmm. And so instead of, you know, well, we could just ask Carissa, I want to mm-hmm. hear how Adam hears it because he gets to practice thinking and feeling the way Carissa feels. So that's two. Number three is work on your sexual wholeness quicker than later, sooner than later. Don't wait to have a sex extraordinary marriage. Your your younger couples can be can come into marriage better. I mean, this from honeymoon to happily ever after. I want that in the hands of people before they get engaged. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because once you get engaged, you don't have time to read a book. <laughs> so true. Ahead of time. So work on that embracing and em- embracing your sexuality for women and bridling and sexual self mastery for men. Those are the two primary challenges for men and women. But work on that sooner so that you can get to what I call a sex extraordinary marriage. And lastly, probably most important, partner with God so much quicker and more intimately than we currently do. I mean, I teach, I teach our kind of gospel doctrine class in, in Sunday school, and we don't talk about, about Christ and partnering with him quite the way we need to. That needs to be, I kind of get this a little bit from the 12 steps where a constant contact with God and, and some of us do it well, but we need to be better at partnering because if you are trying to please and partner and and be a best friend with our savior, Jesus Christ, then your marriage, everything about your marriage and your sexual relationship will be so much easier. Awesome. What a great note to end on. Well said. Thank you so, so much. This has been very, very awesome. (laughs) Folks, if you want to get in contact with Laura, you can reach her at, I'm going to pause it right here. Okay. Info. Is that where you want? Info. Uh, Yeah. Info. Yes. Okay. So folks, if you want to get in touch with Laura, you can reach her at info at strengtheningmarriage.com. And she's also on Instagram or Facebook um, at strengthening marriage. And her website is strengtheningmarriage.com. She also has maritalintimacyinstitute.com. So check out those resources. We'll link everything in the show notes and um, become more educated and transform your sex life. Pick up a book (laughs) or two. Pick up a book and have a sex extraordinary marriage, right? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. You guys are awesome. This has been episode number 60, 12 T's of Female Sexual Wholeness on the Marital Intimacy Show with Laura M. Brotherson. Thanks for tuning in today. We'll be back soon with more great insights for strengthening your marriage. We hope you'll share your thoughts about this episode in a review on iTunes to help others find this unique and so needed information. Oh, we also want to let you know about a super unique opportunity that women have to come learn more and go into greater depth on these 12 T's at our next sexual wholeness workshop for women that will be on Saturday, September 19th, 2020 in Salt Lake City, Utah. It's just a really rare opportunity for women to learn how to embrace and develop their God-given sexuality. You can check it out and I'll get all the details at our website, strengtheningmarriage.com and just learn more about strengthening your marriage intimately there as well. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook at Strengthening Marriage to keep up with all the action. Until next time, this is Laura Brotherson with the Marital Intimacy Show. Have a great day and make your marriage a sex-extraordinary marriage.